Hello all YouTubers, I am the Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this weather presentation for June 9th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that you please do subscribe because sadly, tons of my watch time has been coming from unsubscribed viewers. We are on our way to our next goal of 600 subscribers and thank you guys so much, by the way, for 500 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 600 subscribers, all right? So please do uh, subscribe and also this applies to every single one of you. Please watch the whole video as well as liking and sharing the video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. Now for today, we're going to be talking about an, an upcoming surge in tropical or excuse me, severe activity. Now, before I get started with today's video, if you want to watch my latest a hurricane discussion after this video on the top right corner of your screen. Um, that is my latest hurricane discussion. Obviously, if you want my latest hurricane, like the full forecast for the hurricane season, that is also down on the top right corner of your screen as well if you want to watch that after this video. Now, for today, for the Nebraska and Kansas border, we have an enhanced risk of some severe weather today, so some pretty dangerous severe weather is possible. But even outside of that, we do have a slight risk for severe weather. All right, Kansas City, or we're talking about southwestern Iowa, southeastern Nebraska, as well as from Chicago down through Sierra, uh, maybe Paducah, Kentucky, uh, but basically the Indiana and Illinois state line pretty much running all the way down and including, pretty pretty much including Chicago, especially south side of Chicago. Now for tomorrow, the severe threat is going to move into more in the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. We're going to be talking about both days today and how this could meet, and this is why we're going to have another up, up, uptick in the severe activity, and the enhanced threat does expand as well. So we're talking about all pretty much northern Ohio and southeastern Michigan, including Detroit. So that's another big city included in that. Now, as for today, um, so here is the high resolution model. All right, and here's the low pressure. And you can see how the low pressure all right, is very deep. Now, this isn't Cristobal. Cristobal is right up there. I don't know if you can see my camera might just be blocking it. But there's Cristobal up there. This is a separate low, low pressure entity. That has moved through, and this is going to be a big wind, uh, wind maker because on the you can see how the isobars are just packed together. On the western side, we literally have wind gusts going past 50 miles per hour, so that's how strong these winds are. All right, and that's going to enhance our damaging wind threat, whether it's a non thunderstorm wind threat, it could be a thunderstorm wind threat, who knows? Now, the sphere threat will be moving through. As you can see, there's some rain and thunderstorms behind the storm system. Obviously, we did have a line of storms that is going to be moving through by eight o'clock tonight, so definitely want to watch out for that. As you can see, there you go. And there's Cristobal cruising its rain off to the north. All right, so in terms of the surface-based cape, all right, in that area where we have that severe weather, I say we definitely have the cape, all right? It is there, especially in northeastern Kansas, down through Missouri, down through Arkansas. However, the severe threat, for, at least for this region, was in was right here. So that's where our severe weather uh, risk area was by the indicated by the Storm Prediction Center. You can see we do have our cape, and then once those storms come through, that cape is pretty much absolutely just gone. There's absolutely nothing pretty much behind it. So you can tell this is kind of like a strong, almost like a strong frontal system. There is no heat energy going to be left behind this storm system. Now, in terms of the uh, wind shear, I don't think it's going to be quite getting there in time. We might have a little bit of shear in that same region, in that uh, the, the borders of the four states here, Iowa, um, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri. But the strongest wind shear, that strongest jet energy, it's going to come right behind it. All right, so after the thunderstorms come through, you're going to have a giant wind threat. All right, so that's what you're going to have to watch out for. That jet stream that comes, and it's, it's, it could even be a derecho, but I don't see it too working on its complex of storms developing, but it's going to be a huge blast of wind. We're talking about over 50 miles an hour as the storms are coming through. So I say you definitely want to watch out for the winds because I can tear down some power lines and some trees. Um, in terms of the supercell complex or a supercell composite, I'd say watch out. Southeastern Nebraska, Northeastern Kansas, I say that's one region you should definitely watch out for some potential supercells. Um, as for the significant tornado parameter, do we have the chance for some significant tornadoes? Again, just have one little cluster uh, that moves through over, uh, about in the next few, few hours there. So maybe 6 to nine, six p.m. to 9 p.m. Certainly possible because see some tornadoes. Maybe that might move into northern Missouri as we head into our 9 o'clock hour tonight. All right, so definitely want to watch out because... I think that because they were having another low pressure entity along with Cristobal and the fact that it's so strong and we got an enhanced jet stream flow, 
I definitely should definitely watch out for the winds because I think the wind's gonna be the main killer with this. Uh, we can still have those some hail, some flooding, rainfall, and yes, even tornadoes as well. Cannot rule those out, but I think wind is gonna be the very main threat because we're gonna have both thunderstorm related winds and non thunderstorm related winds. All right, so here is some of the updraft helices because obviously when you get the with the hail and even if you want to get what's you gonna get the hail. All right, there you have to have updrafts and then downdrafts, and we can have what's called a microburst fan. I was trying to think of it there. So microburst, because obviously you can have a strong updraft and then a really strong downdraft, and it really just pushes the the clouds and the rain down, just spreads it all out, and it can really push the wind down as well. So those microbursts can be, and there's even what's called a macro burst, which is even worse. All right, but it, here's where we have these strong updrafts. As you can see, here you go. There's one little cluster uh, in southeastern Nebraska, and now I see this is the three-hour max run. All right, and even a little stripe there from Kansas into Missouri. So this is why this is why the storm prediction center said. Hey, let's, you know, let's put the risk area here today. All right, this is one of the reasons why. You got some strong updrafts that could result in some strong downdrafts, and that can really um, result in a lot of heavy rain and wind. Now, the surface, uh, when we talk about the uh, turning of the winds with height, obviously we know that's very important. And because of this other low pressure system, it's definitely gonna, it's definitely gonna help. All right, we got the winds coming out of the east, southeast at the surface. We got winds coming out of the south, and probably south southeast at 5,000 feet. So there is your turning of the winds with height, and we know that that's what we really need uh, in order to have the those rotating uh, storms to have the tornado. Now this is the end of the high resolution model. Before I move on to the NAM model, all right. So again, here's the NAM model, and now and that'll be for the we're going to be looking at the NAM model for the northeast. Before I do, um, I want to take a look at the excessive rainfall outlook because I think rainfall will be another big threat from this. Um, like I said, rainfall is definitely going to be our number two threat. All right, if not, some places rainfall can be the worst threat depending on your uh, proximity to the two low pressure entities, both Cristobal and the other one. For some areas, rain may be your biggest threat. Other areas, it may be wind. But either way, rain and wind is going to be the main threat here. Um, and here's your slight risk, and that's really all here: slight risk of excessive rainfall. And even inside of that, we have an even worse moderate risk, which is almost near the top of the scale in terms of our risk. Because you only have marginal, slight, moderate, and high. So even if it's a slight, like oh, that's not that bad. But no, slight is right in the middle. So slight is still a big risk and lots of excessive rainfall. This is a risk of one to six hour rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance at any given point. Um, and this is for this is valid for noon today, I believe. Yes, noon today through 8 a.m. tomorrow. So that is your threat we're looking for here. Um, even some rain there for the southeast. Pretty sure it's not linked to Cristobal at this point. It is moving north at 25 miles per hour. It is moving through uh, Wisconsin, as we or as we speak, for, through the northern plains. Now, in terms of the excessive rainfall threat for tomorrow, that does wither down a little bit, but still, Cristobal and that other storm may combine. So, from Iowa up through the UP of Michigan, we still do have a marginal risk of excessive rainfall for uh, tomorrow. Now, here's a NAM model, and like I said on the day two graph, all right, here's your here's the northeast, all right, and then it's slight to enhanced risk for tomorrow. So that's what we'll be looking at now, part two of the northeast. Now. Again, that is going to be tomorrow, so let's go to tomorrow. All right, and here you go. Tomorrow is Wednesday, right? That's right. Again, I'm just losing my sense of time. But here is one very strong band, at least according to the NAM model, down through northern Michigan, down through southern Michigan, uh, through central Ohio, all the way down through eastern Kentucky. All right? Is it the most organized line? I mean, I don't think so. But it looks like a very, very... Uh, we do have some strong thunderstorms encapsulated in there. All right, and here's your line's going to continue to move through. And this is, covers a wide area. I mean, I bet you it probably goes all the way down to Tennessee. I mean, if I have, if I were to zoom out, it would go down to, like, Tennessee pretty much. And it goes all the way up through Canada. So that's how strong this is. It goes through Kentucky, West Virginia, Ohio, um, eventually Pennsylvania, but and then all the way up into Canada. So there's your line of storms that's going to be moving through. Um, I don't think the Mid-Atlantic is going to have as big of a threat. I think most I think most of it's going to be parts of the interior northeast and the Ohio Valley and the eastern most portions of the Great Lakes. However, the Mid-Atlantic could still see a thunderstorm. Could that could there be a little line that develops? But the line will be breaking apart. This other line I was talking about uh, that could be breaking apart, but we're gonna have to see, right? Because we could have multiple uh, rounds of storms that could be moving through. So NAM model definitely indicating that yes, we do have a risk uh, for some severe weather tomorrow. All right, so let's move through and let's look at the Cape because the Cape is definitely there. You look at South Central New York, you look at uh, Central Pennsylvania, some areas that are in that risk for tomorrow. Uh, we do have a couple thousand joules per kilogram. It's a little bit farther north in the latitudes here. Not saying we can't get severe weather by any means, but the Cape Valley is already decently high for this time of year. Between three and 4,000 joules per kilogram. 
nearing 4,000 in some spots in Pennsylvania. All right, and then once that line moves through, everything starts, a couple of clusters of storms move through, the capes values start to come down. We lose that heat energy that we need in the atmosphere for those storms. But that will likely happen after those storms have already gone through, which makes total sense. Uh, in terms of the shear, I don't think we're going to have much. All right, so, and that's why I think that in terms of developing the hail and even getting the tornadoes, but still, all right, we still do have some little little pockets of shear. All right, they're not going to be as strong, I don't think, until the the main push that jet stream really comes through the next day. And this is Thursday now, so the storms are well gone by this point. So the shear not going to, like I said, I keep saying it because I got to remind you guys, make sure you know that wind shear is good for severe weather, but not for developing hurricanes. So I say wind shear is more low to medium, but I still think that it can, uh, it can we can develop some thunderstorms because of the heat energy, we got some moisture. Um, and the supercell composite. Look at the supercell composite values. All right, this is 2 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon. Means we could have the chance for some supercell development through northeastern Pennsylvania, central New York, even northern New York there in the in the mountains. But like I said, the good news is I don't think we're going to see too much of this severe weather at nighttime, which is good because, as I say a lot, night nighttime tornadoes are over two and a half times as deadly as daytime ones. So I think most of it's, and, and the sun sets later, like closer to 9 o'clock now in parts of the east. I mean, more like 8.30, 8.35. So I think most of the uh, thunderstorm activity will come late evening, could linger into the early, um, the early hours of, you know, after sunset. But other than that, the severe weather shouldn't be too much of it overnight, which I do think is some good news. Like, I'm sure a lot of us would rather get um, severe weather in the daytime than nighttime. You know what? Let's make that a weather poll question because... Sadly, YouTube is going to be canceling uh, poll info cards starting tomorrow, actually. So as our last weather poll question on the top right corner of your screen appearing now, would you rather see severe weather at nighttime or daytime? All right. So put your poll up there. No wrong answer. Just a weather poll. Do you guys think? And just want to see what you guys think. Do you rather have daytime or nighttime uh, severe weather as our last celebrating our last weather poll question? All right. But looking at our significant tornado parameters now, do we have a threat for some potentially significant tornadoes? Um, I'd say yes. All right. Oh, uh, not too high of a threat, however. Um, but I said, I, I, do, I do think, sorry for the stutter there, but we, I do, there is a very small threat there, but more so worry about some uh, strong clusters of storms. Don't worry about becoming huge, ginormous supercells or, you know, huge tornado producing storms. But um, I definitely think a potent thunderstorm can really get in there, especially when you look at, this is um, 5 p.m. now on Wednesday little stronger cluster of maybe some more higher chance for some significant tornadoes right on the Pennsylvania, New York borderline there. In terms of the updraft helices, again, do we have a stronger updraft that can lead to stronger downdrafts? Um, the answer to that one is most likely going to be no. As you can see, we don't have too much in the way of updraft helicities. We actually have more of that actually in Michigan and Ohio, which is why maybe the SPC kind of made a little bit higher threat over there. Um, but in terms of Pennsylvania, New York, I don't see too much of it. Obviously, we do have these little very thin stripes. It wasn't as widespread as we looked at the other model in the other region there by Nebraska and Kansas. It didn't look as high as it was there. Um, surface base cape, all right? And when you look at the, and the turning of the winds with height, and before I get on, I just realized that if you would like to check out my next video that we'll be doing on the tropical disturbance on the top right corner of your screen, if you want to, um, go to that video. And somewhere in there, there probably will be a weather poll question. Might as well do it on the... On the last day, I will be doing a weather poll question on that one as well. So if you want to go check that video out, uh, de definitely do so after this video. But it, in terms of the answering the question, do we have turning of the winds with height? Um, for some areas, yes. Like, if turn, like Pennsylvania, we got south winds at the surface, west winds um, at 5,000 feet. So for Pennsylvania, southern or northern Pennsylvania, southern New York, I definitely think we do have some turning of the winds with height. So watch out for some upcoming spike in tornado activity. Definitely want to keep our eyes on that. Thank you guys for watching. I am Dweller Dude. Signing off till next time. Catch you guys next video.